Hello and welcome to my new video, How to Draw Spider-Man, the Marvel superhero created by Stan Lee. For this drawing you will need a pencil, a red pen, a blue pen, a silver pen and a black pen. The first step in this complex drawing is to draw the simplest shapes first, and that would be to start off with an egg-shaped oval for the head of Spider-Man. From this oval which is on its side, I need to draw part of the shoulders of the arm that's going to come forward and also the arm that's going to go back. So we need a line coming out of the egg shape going to the left and another one going to the right. The one going to the left can come down a little bit and makes part of the left hand side of the chest of Spider-Man. And then next, seeing it like a zigzag, we need to put in the knee of Spider-Man here as it's all a sort of folded up shape. So we're squeezing the knee in so it's quite compact and quite close to the chest and then the leg gets quite thin at the ankle and then a sort of pointy foot and then reading across trying to find the right hand side of the chest and just reworking the top of the knee and then the arm that's coming to the right has the hand that's spraying out with the fingers which will be quite large in relation to the head so the arm needs to be quite long and it's going to have the other knee sort of poking through at some stage so the two feet are almost touching but not quite. So one foot is on its side so you can see the straight line of the sole of the shoe, shoe like shape that Spider-Man has. And then because he has various shapes of muscles within his body most of the lines can be quite taut and curved to some extent to give the impression of the shape of the form of the body underneath. So here we need the hand and we're going to draw the fingers quite large as I say because the body is foreshortened so it's nearer us than the head of Spider-Man is so that everything will be larger. So really it's almost like drawing a bunch of bananas, have them quite solid and with one finger extending and pointing. So now we've got the basic sort of structure of Spider-Man, we can just divide up some of the lines a little bit and imagine if there was sort of if he was made out of sausages and you could draw lines around the sausage and then you get the sort of form of the figure rather than just an outline pencil drawing so these sort of spirally lines that I'm doing they're sort of useful for later on but they're not really going to stay there too much so just reworking some of the hand now just to get it a little bit more precise now obviously you need to be working from um, either this image or an image off the internet. There are lots of images of Spider-Man. And you'll find that most of the more interesting images have Spider-Man in such a position where the shapes are, are almost abstract. So it's quite good perhaps to think of the shapes, not really what they are, but just as shapes. So you can look at the the shapes and just try and draw them rather than trying to think what they are too much. Although saying that, you need to think a little bit about what they are. So I think in a moment I need to start off with the head. I'll put a symmetrical line down the centre of the head and then the sort of eye shape on either side of the head and redefining the head a little bit at this stage. So the next stage is to do some of the lines that are spraying out from the point in between the eyes of Spider-Man's head. So these lines are following the form of the face curving around just as the egg curves around the lines will curve around so there will be straight lines on a curved surface which makes a curved line and then looking at some of the other little details that I need to put on the two outstretched arms just to differentiate the different shapes of the costume that he's wearing. Looking at the negative shapes, the shapes in between the, the solid shapes of the figure are a good useful thing to find out exactly what you're sort of aiming for. Now the chest of Spider-Man is sort of twisting around because he's quite acrobatic flying through the air in this um, pose that we're using. And then there are other shapes within his costume which sort of break up the arms into a variety of different shapes which you just need to look carefully and see. So you can see along the lines of the shoulders, the actual um, stretch marks of these lines, almost like a stick that's been bent and it has the sort of power of the bend of the stick. 
most of these lines have that sort of taut quality of strength to them. So you have lines coming out from the centre of the neck like spokes of a wheel. And then you have necklace sort of lines coming around in concentric circles from the neck. And these sort of loop around like a dangling chain to create the spider's web effect. Now the next stage is to build up some details based on these structural lines of the spider's web that we've drawn over the top of the figure of Spider-Man. So the lines need to be following the form of the body to create the strength of shape that we need in this Spider-Man portrait. So the next stage will be to work on the leg in the foreground at the bottom of the picture. And in that one hopefully you can see more clearly how to create the simple shapes that we're putting on as the design for the spider's web. So to do that we need to draw some lines around the contour of the leg and then contrasting that with lines that go along the line of the leg all the way to the toes at the end of the foot. So it's like a grid-like pattern but not quite because it's bent over the shape and form of the body. So at this stage we've almost finished the pencil drawing. It's been a 4B pencil drawing and I just need to speed ahead a little bit. And then the next stage is going to be to add some colour. And to add some colour I'll just use some marker pens, a red one and a blue one. And it'll go over the pencil to some extent. And then we'll use more pen work on top. As they're really useful for guidelines to show where the pen mark goes. So if you started this drawing just with pen first time round, I think it would be extremely difficult to put the lines exactly where you want. So now jumping along, I'll just add some colour with some felt tip pens. Focusing on the head here, I can show you with a bit more detail how the lines from the centre point between the eyes spray out in quite um, smooth curves and I'm just using a thin black pen to create these lines on top of the pencil lines. So it is worth doing the pencil lines first so that now that we're at this stage we can draw with a pen with quite a lot of accuracy just the way that we need to to create the spider web effects on the face and the eyes. Getting in some detail knowing that the basic structure has been worked out at the earlier stage. So most of these lines have pencil lines underneath them, so I can draw them with a pen. At this stage it's just going around the curve of the face and then here I'm joining up some of the lines with the sort of loop-like, chain-like effect to create the spider's web. For the overall drawing the face is really important just to get the sense of structure of it and I have the pencil lines underneath to help me create that. So around the pointed eye-like shapes, there is a metallic sort of structure, so that needs some quite dark pen work in that area to make it um, contrast with the thinner lines that are in other areas. So I just do both eyes here to the eye on the right and match up with the eye on the left. So I want a little bit of the light area in as well. And just pulling back here to see the whole drawing, I think within the eyes I need to put some maybe some silver pen because they're very highly reflective eyes. And then after that I'm going to do with just a pencil mark, I'm going to put in a city below. Now to put a city in below, I need to start off with a diagonal line going from the top left to the bottom right. And this will sort of go through or behind the figure as it goes along. And it needs to follow through really as straight as you can and then next to it a parallel line so that you've got the width of a road that's what I'm imagining so we're looking down at Spider-Man and then even down further below very far down there'll be a road so it needs to be a very big road but it's very far away and then from that on the right I draw one line coming up and this is going to be the perspective view of a building so the building is going to get much smaller as it goes towards the bottom right. And then as it comes up, it's going to spray up like a fan of four lines. And then on the other side of the road, I'll do another building with just a corner of a rectangle at the bottom middle of the page. And then these lines will go down to the vanishing point, which is between the two buildings that I've done on the road somewhere there. So all of the lines for all of the buildings that I'm going to draw 
are going to, if they're upright lines, they're going to go to the vanishing point just to the right of the foot. And then the tops of the buildings, they're all going to be rectangles, which follow the line of the road. So all the rectangles of the top of the buildings, they could be circles, I guess, but I'm just doing them rectangles for straightforward ease. All of those need to be parallel to the diagonal angle of the road. And then the sides of the buildings, as I say, need to shoot down towards the one single vanishing point. So it's one point perspective that we're doing here. And I put the vanishing point in the bottom right just to make the image more dramatic because that seems to be the direction of the figure of Spider-Man. seems to be moving towards from the left of the picture to the right. And therefore, that makes sense. So... From the vanishing point on the right, I've got the two biggest buildings, well, at least the two buildings nearest. And then on the left, I can do buildings behind other ones. So you just put the same rectangles in again, but they're sometimes hidden behind, and you can just play around perhaps of the different shapes of the tops of roofs. And maybe I should just add a few details on the tops of roofs as well. Just erase anything that just needs changing a little bit. So I'm just making up like a little pyramid on the top of this and maybe some cooling vents on the top of this one here so that that helps create some sort of sense of scale to it and then just speeding ahead here the buildings will just keep going on the left and then on the right the original two buildings will need some floors in them and the floors of these skyscrapers will all be parallel to the road to the original diagonal of the road that goes across and that will create quite a steep perspective, which I think is necessary. I just had a few buildings on the right as well. And then some tiny cars at the bottom, which are just sort of like ant-like dots. And then I've got the basic structure now of a city in one point perspective. And then I'll just speed up the drawing here because I'm going to add some windows and some further details. And I think I'll add a little bit of tone to the buildings as well to create the atmosphere that I want to create. So there's quite a lot in this drawing to follow through. I hope it makes some sort of sense. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find it useful for your own drawing. I hope you like this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Circle Line Art School, for many more art videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.